What would you do if people are trying to kill you and nobody will believe you? Welcome to Daunting Breakdowns, movies involving fun or less than extreme topics. So pop your popcorn because it's time for some movies that won't drive you crazy. Today we check out The Den, a found footage computer screen slasher film where a lady has her life turned upside down after seeing a live murder on a chat site. And even worse, will she be next? Today I'm going to show you all the crazy messed up scenes and tell you a story you wouldn't believe. Cue the Gohan. Let's open up Din Chat. Ugh, reminds me of Skype. Elizabeth is having an online meeting with her professor and the Institutional Review Board to explain her research project. She's using Din Chat to study humanity, hoping to talk to various people all over the world. That sounds whack. No social barriers means no standards. People start to suck once they sign on anonymously. She convinced her professors easily and is ready to start her new- Oh, she got a bakery back there. She anxiously waits to see if they will sign off on her research. One timely call from her professor and she learns that not only did she get a grant, they think her research will pay off. Good work Elizabeth, get that college money. Now it's time to start her new job. Please notice that Din Chat is not responsible for anything you see. So you can see cartel executions, CP and more hell on earth, but they get to walk away scot free? Seeing a man shake his hot dog back and forth was the least of it and weirdly gave me nightmares of middle school. Oh look, how convenient, a webcam advertisement as soon as you log in on a new video chat site. Companies pay attention to your habits and trade your private information. To know to sell you a new webcam, Elizabeth. They know your full name, your address, your emails and phone numbers, shopping habits, your social security number, and not just her, but you too. That's some real supervillain stuff. Information is power but you can take away their power with the help of Incogni. It's really easy. You sign up and allow them to work on your behalf. Incogni will do all the messy work for you, requesting hundreds of data brokers to remove your information. Look at all these random nameless companies with my personal information in their databases. But Incogni's already removed my data from over 32 data brokers in just weeks. It would have took me years. Imagine your new privacy, no more spam emails, no more hundreds of spam calls a week, and that's because Incogni is helping to remove your data because no one should profit off your information. Go to incogni.com slash spooky rice and use the code spooky rice to get an exclusive offer of 60% off. You can't trust these data brokers to do what's best with your lives. That's incogni.com slash spooky rice and use the code spooky rice so you can take your personal data off the market. Now back to the chump with our whole life on the internet. That white stuff isn't paint, let me tell ya. Oh, and here's Lex Luthor looking up how to be loved like Superman is. Anyway, Elizabeth tries signing in again, but this time, is something horrific. The AIR picture pops up and a woman's voice is screaming for help. Bound. Turns out, this is Elizabeth's room. She wakes up and shuts off that dark video. <laughs> I thought it was Elizabeth, but it's British Elizabeth. Everybody has a multinational variant. This woman was the best humanity has to offer for Din Chat. A side plot is that Elizabeth is avoiding her boyfriend and everybody and gives him a lot of long distance. He is disappointed. Later that night, someone hacks into Elizabeth's account and even picks up her laptop somehow. What kind of hacking is this? Well, no, someone has broken in and records Elizabeth while she sleeps, but it's her boyfriend. He snuck in but I'd be way more pissed than my boyfriend for sneaking inside. Okay, well it's getting steamy, at the very least close the laptop. All she did was close the DIN app, but the hacker logs back in remotely and records her and the boyfriend's intimate encounter. Then he sends it to himself and her professors. This hacker mentions the sexual encounter horrifying Elizabeth. Then the hacker shows his live footage of a woman tied up and tortured. He then slashes her throat in front of Elizabeth to see. Elizabeth immediately jumps up and calls the police. Luckily, she records her screen for her research, so she easily shows the police the crime she was forced to see. All the police say is that they don't have the resources to investigate this. She goes to that chat board and asks people if anyone knows who this is. Who can help solve this brutal murder case? Damn hey, girl, you fine. Yeah, not him. Elizabeth, you can't just video chat random people. You gotta message them first. Oh, look, this is the friends of that hacker. Interesting friends. They're all like the Legion of Evil. Oh my goodness. The den literally attracts the worst of humanity. All these comments for a woman that was killed. I saw Twitter comments like this once, and I hate that this is a downside of privacy. Granted, everyone thinks the video is fake. The video is tearing apart the relationship between her and her boyfriend. She narrowly misses him getting kidnapped by one of the killers. 
The next day, her boyfriend requests a video chat with her, but it's just a video of him at the zoo, like the first YouTube video. What happened to her boyfriend? Even worse, her professor is angry with her. Remember, the hacker sent a video of her having sex to the entire school board. Couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. With nothing else, all she can do is figure out what happened to her boyfriend. But all she gets is people jerking their hot dogs to her. Finally, the hacker reaches out to her, but gives her malware that deletes every file on her computer. All her research gone down the drain. This friend of hers? He's a little sus. He's like her geek cybersecurity friend that obviously has a crush on her. Still, she follows the traces given to her and finds her best friend Jenny seemingly dead in a bloody bathtub. Luckily, she's still alive and the police race to their location. But no time for that. Elizabeth's pregnant sister is in danger. The hackers record themselves live breaking in into Elizabeth's sister's house and gives Lizzie the link to watch. A modern day Halloween opening, her sister will not listen to Elizabeth yet yelling at her to get out. If my family told me to get out of my house, I'd be out like a snap. Woman, you're pregnant. You ain't got time for no investigation. And just like that, the hackers have tied up Elizabeth's sister. Luckily, the police are on the way. Thanks to Elizabeth's quick thinking, the hackers walk out with no urgency at all and record the investigation hours later. Where did these geeky psychos get the balls? One of the police detectives talks to Elizabeth. Why doesn't your sister have her husband at home? Her husband should be here. It's not her fault. What does she do? It's not her fault that he went to go get milk and never came back. You call him and ask him where he at. They follow Elizabeth home and she is protected by the police officers. And here your ass go, still using the damn app to chat with people. You got through college with this three-year-old intelligence. Yes, there's a camera in your vent. Why do you have to look at it? Just run out of there, airhead. Nope, it's too late because the police officer was not only killed, but he was used as an example. They throw her across the room, but luckily she stabs them right in the stomach, brutally stabbing him over and over and putting that sick evil creature out of their misery. She runs blocks away like she's trying to get out of Bala's country, only to eventually get subdued by another one of the hackers. She wakes up tied down and bolted to an abandoned basement floor, but she's in just enough room to limp over to the computer. She sees that she has a webcam wrapped painfully around her head. Suddenly, her boyfriend is put on the other side, safe but tortured. Also, she gets another invite seeing her friend, Max, the guy who we thought was sus. Wait, so he's actually not the hacker? He gets suffocated live in front of his friends. That's that Gus Fring treatment right there. Man, I really thought he was the killer. Watching her friends brutally die in front of her is a hopeless scene to watch as the hackers walk through the room. She uses her combat skills to fight as best she can, suffocating the hacker with the chain. Damn, Elizabeth built different now. Just like that, she kills one of the enemies and takes their keys to get herself out of the lock. Now low key. This giving me Paxton energy from Hostel. I see you guys commenting like, don't compare her to Paxton. But hey, I can't lie. This is the Paxton energy, that disturbing platinum character blood flowing through her veins. She won't just die, she'll die hard. But look at how brutal this organization is. Nightmare fuel as she walks through this dark setting right out of hell. A huge alarm sounds as she escapes, as if she escapes from a large compound. And not just this kids next door wannabe bullshit that we thought it was. She beats another hacker and acts this weirdo where her boyfriend is. She has to keep on running and makes it out, getting chased by three men in black. She beats another member and takes their car, escaping from the torture compound. But unfortunately, she is hit by another car. The evil organization drag her out of the car and it blacks out. Even if she died, she died like a G. Snap it up for her. Meanwhile, the British variant of Elizabeth does some online chatting herself, but then she gets a message from Elizabeth. Answering the call, she sees Elizabeth about to be executed, slowly dying as they kick the bucket out. But before she dies, they cut the rope and they shoot her right in the head. Rest in peace, Elizabeth. You died hard, homie. But this website, watch Elizabeth's narrative. You basically watch someone's entire life only to see them die. 7,000 videos available to purchase just like this. No longer are we watching a movie using webcam footage. It's actually real camera work. It would have been so much better if they had it like this the whole movie. <laughs> but that's just me. This family man closes the site as soon as his son sees what he's on. The end. Normal people, real deal, out here watching death and despair with full families. 
I remember on Reddit a few weeks back there was some new cartel video that they were saying was worse than Funky Town and I almost clicked it. Stay away from the murder stuff, it sticks with you. A lot of this movie seemed like a cautionary crunch for Elizabeth to go outside for once. Her friends had to beg her just to leave and meet up. I'm not saying her research would have been bad but I do think we all need to stop being online so much all the time. It's cool to talk to people around the world, but sometimes you gotta turn the computer off, and that's coming from a YouTuber. All of us are people stuck behind computers. Social media is designed to hook you, and these chat sites don't invite the best of people. So it's always good to turn everything off every now and then, and that's why you should watch this video on Black Mirror. If you thought that was bad for Elizabeth to have her sex tape sent to her professor, then you won't imagine how bad it gets for this guy in Black Mirror. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to see more messed up parts. Thanks for watching. Spooky out.